Hello everyone, this is Betsy from Time Enough. Welcome to my channel. It's rather a gloomy day here. It's raining off and on and I can't work out in my garden today. And so I thought I would share some of my old flower books that I've collected over the years. And these are my absolute favorites. Um, maybe you have some of them. Maybe some will be new to you. Um, but I just adore each and every one of them. And I thought I'd start from the smallest to the largest. So this one is called A Flower Fairy Alphabet. There's a series of these, and you may be very familiar with The Little Fairies by Cicely Mary Barker. Um, this was published in, I think, the 1940s. And it has poems and pictures of flowers and little fairies to represent them. And it goes in alphabetical order, starting with apple blossom. And there's a little poem that goes with it. Bugle. Columbine, Double Daisy, and so on. So you get the idea. Pansy for P, and it goes all the way back to Zinnia for Z. And I just think that this is just so beautiful. Um, every illustration is simply gorgeous. And I absolutely adore this little book, even the cover. So that's my first one. Now this next one, I include it, even though it's not really all about flowers, but it's just the sweetest little book. And it is an antique. I think it's from 1841 or 42. And it's called Fresh Flowers. It has a beautiful embossed cover with the gold gilded um, wreath and with little acorns and fresh the words fresh flowers in the middle what i really love is the title page it says fresh flowers for my children by a mother boston 1842 and it just has this mother's little poems that she's written for her children. Um, and she has tiny little illustrations that look to be hand colored. See, some of them aren't. So I guess whoever owned this at one time colored a few of them in. There's a little beehive, um, little potted roses. That one's about love. George and Rover. George was a good and pleasant child. He loved each living thing, the cows and lambs, the trees and flowers, the birds upon the wing. And his dog Rover, of course. Nursery song. I just think it's the dearest little book. I just adore it. And I really treasure that one. Now this next one, I don't know many people who haven't heard of this one who love flowers, the language of flowers. And it's been published many, many times in many different editions. And it just um, starts with A and it goes through all the names of the flowers and herbs. And it has uh, a, a definition of each or um, a significance or meaning for each one. Like um, almond flowering, almond means hope. Um, amethyst, admiration. Anemone, sickness, and so on. I really love this over here. In 1913, it says, To mother, wishing you many happy returns of the day from father. August 8th, 1913. 
And then it says, there is a language little known. Lovers claim it as their own. It's symbol small upon the land, wrought by nature's wondrous hand. And in their silent beauty speak of life and joy to those who seek for love divine and sunny hours in the language of the flowers. J.W.H. So it goes on, just lists of flowers and daffodil, regard, um, flowering fern, fascination. These little illustrations. So all the different symbols and meanings for different flowers. first published in England. Um, I think this copyright is 1968. The next one I have is, it's kind of, um, I don't know what that material is. It almost feels like fabric. I'm not sure. But this is also embossed with the beautiful word flowers and gold and roses from William Wordsworth. This is another pretty old one. And just beautiful illustrations. I love this one. 1906. And again, poems by William Wordsworth. I wandered lonely as a cloud. I'm sure you've heard of that one about daffodils, just pretty little flower illustrations with gold gilding letters. Just another beautiful little book. Look at that beautiful, um, what are those? I guess they're violets or violas. So this one, I'm sure everyone is familiar with. I mean, we can't leave this one out by Edith Holden, The Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady. Ah, oh, just absolutely stunning. And each month she writes and draws these most gorgeous illustrations. And you feel like you're reading her personal notes, which you really are. Um, but it, little did she know that this would be such a keepsake and a treasure for so many people that came ahead of her. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. She also wrote many other books, and another one I have that I love is The Nature Notes of an Edwardian Lady. Very similar. Again, with pretty illustrations divided into months. I got this offline, and I it's funny, I had to laugh. I inside of it, I guess as a bookmark, someone put a five-pound note from England. <laughs> I wonder if that's still usable. I guess, I don't know. I, As I, some of you may know, my son's in London, so the next time I go, I'll have to take it with me and show it to him and see <laughs> if I can still use it. <laughs> but I don't know, it's kind of a nice little treasure to keep in there, I think. one I recently discovered actually and I think I found this off of Thrift Books. That's an online company and you can find some nice books there for very reasonable prices. The Country Flowers of a Victorian Lady. And I just think it's absolutely stunning. It's by Fanny Robinson. And this one was published um, 1999. First published in Great Britain in 1999. 
So I guess we would call this one vintage. But I just think it is absolutely gorgeous. Look at the the writing, the printing, <clears throat> the the script. <clears throat> what do you call it? I guess that's what you call it. The script, the text. I think it's just so well done. Camellias. I have camellias in my front yard that come out in the very, very late winter, early spring. They're pink and they're just gorgeous. Great for the shade. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. So if you haven't seen this one, you might like to add this to your collection. This is another nature diary. Um, this one's by Janet Marsh. Another beautiful book. Added this feather that I found. Published in London again, 1979 by Janet Marsh. And the diary. And like Edith Holden, she starts in January and keeps a little diary of her garden and her um, recollections and what happens during each day of that month. What she sees, what she notices new, the weather. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Look at that dandelion. The first glimpse of the sun for at least eight days. Paintbrushes lie untouched as Anthony and I prepare to go down to the river. It feels and sounds like the beginning of spring. So very similar, isn't it, to Edith Holden's books. Maybe that inspired her, I'm sure it did. But beautiful in its own right. Insects too. <laughs> Can't leave them outside of a garden, can we? Now these last two books are my absolute favorites. These are very old. Um, this one is called Flower Fancies. And look how, look how big this is. You can see the, the cover has been waterlogged somewhat, but still absolutely gorgeous. Flower fancies. In this one, we have again poems, but before each poem and each lithograph, I would call it, there's a piece of tissue to protect it. Daffodils, and then a poem. Tissue. Beneath my fee feet, I feel the mold, dark and dreary and damp and cold. But the tender warmth and light I love are calling me, drawing me from above. I turn, I turn to the sun, away from death and crawling things, up where a little bird chirps and sings. The live long day and the soft caress of a breeze comes now, comes now and then to bless. I turn, I turn to the sun. Oh, I think I skipped one. Look at that. Look at that sweet pea. Is that stunning? I mean, I don't know if you can see how gorgeous those colors are, but each one is prettier than the next. I hate to turn them almost because I don't want to tear these tissue papers. Look at that. Puck would paint a picture, so ho, the Mary Fay caught the colors from the sunset. Ah, the Mary Fay. Fay, is that the right way to say that? I wonder if that letter F 
stood for D. Maybe it's supposed to be Soho the Merry Day. Caught the colors from the sunset. Ah, the Merry Day. I might be wrong. Oh no, because here it says well a day. <laughs> I'm not sure. If you know, let me know. Look at those. Look at that. Aren't they gorgeous? I mean, this book is such a treasure. Lilies. Lilacs. Poppies. Look at the po red poppies. <gasps> roses. We have to see the roses. Mm. Empress of Beauty, my velvet robed queen, hiding your heart neath a round and a sheen. Uh, sorry, I don't think I'm seeing right. Hiding your heart neath aroma and sheen of thick crowding petals. No one would think. I guess that's the end of that poem. <laughs> so even though this, some of this is falling apart, it's just absolutely stunning. And this last one is another beautiful book. It's called Grandmother's Garden, illustrated by Mary Cicely Spaulding. And this is another one from the 1800s. I believe it's 1891. Nope, 1888. By Eben E. Rexford. And what's neat about this one Again, I love the text. But all these pictures are done in a sepia tone. They're not colored. They're not, you know, gorgeous illustrations like the last one, but they're still absolutely beautiful. Lilies of the Valley. How sweet they are, she whispered. What dear things God has made. I am going to dwell in his country where the roses never fade. And she folded her hands on her bosom and it seemed as if she prayed. I'm sure his grandmother inspired him even I think that's a male's name I might be wrong if you know you can tell me and look at the gold gilded pages ah Let's see here this is like a, a fabric and paper um, even maybe it's Eben I don't know to me it sounds like it's a male but I could be wrong So I hope you have enjoyed seeing my books today. Um, I just love to bring them out in the spring. I like to put them on my coffee table, put them in my bay window, put them on my bookshelves here and there all over my house. So thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you are inspired. Maybe you'll look for a certain book I've shared or um, just enjoy having seen these. So take care everyone and thanks so much for watching me. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye.